These are the grazing lands, the rangelands of this country. Nearly 900 million acres of them, over a third of the United States, devoted for generations to the raising of livestock. All right, who's excited to actually talk about this food and get yeah. this thing going? <laughs> Super impolite to look at people when they eat spaghetti. Don't look at me. At First Nations, we have this, this fairly strong core belief that when armed with the appropriate resources, um, Native American communities have the wherewithal and the capacity to fix their own problems. Our goal at First Nations is to provide a little bit of financial and technical assistance resource to make these things happen. Instead of asking, what's wrong? What, what do we need to fix? They asked us, what are your strengths? What do you do well? And instead of asking, what's the answer to diabetes? It was asking us, what lessons have our ancestors taught us to be stronger? Native food systems, like other assets in American Indian communities, have been colonized, destroyed, altered. Uh, so the work of First Nations and our Native Agriculture and Food Systems Initiative is really about assisting tribes to regain control of their food system. We have a Cochiti Farmers Mentorship Program where we pair a young person with an elder person and they go through a season of harvest and growing together. And as Pueblo people, we have such a strong agricultural society. Now it's my generation's responsibility to continue those agricultural practices. We do a lot of work raising money for these projects, and then we get to show up and actually see the real work happening. These are some of the plants that were recently planted. We got some tobacco here. Is that used for like ceremonies? Yes, sir. The Santa Domingo Senior Center applied uh, for a grant through the First Nations to do a greenhouse project. During the springtime, it would provide seedlings to the community. And this is uh, an opportunity for the seniors to get additional funding for their activities and so forth. They also work with the youth in transplanting some of these seedlings with the John Hopkins program, and the seniors teach the kids uh, the traditional values of that. When we're here at San Domingo this week, and we're seeing what they've built here in their greenhouse and their farming program, not just amazing projects in the physical infrastructure they build, but in the hope and the, and the future orientation that they're building for their communities. It teaches our younger generations the way our forefathers grew up before we had Walmart, Kmart, and all those grocery stores, they grew their own foods, and they fixed their own foods traditionally. The first time I heard the word food sovereignty was through First Nations Development Institute. We've partnered with the Institute of American Indian Arts by providing different kinds of training and really trying to focus on developing the technical skills of producers. A big part of our land-grant capacity development is creating a model for a food system for communities. Our raised beds features 
The waffle garden technology in conjunction with some drip irrigation, we're marrying that modern ag technology that doesn't compromise that cultural element. And that's, I think, is some of the coolest stuff we do is when we work with Luke and we work with the folks here at IAIA, they're making that connection for these Indian youth to understand that they had deep scientific knowledge for a very long time. Many of our programs that we all participate in strengthen the body, mind, and spirit of a native person to be able to move forth into the future to take this to the next generation because that's really what it's all about, the next generation. To learn more about First Nations and their work with Native Agriculture and Food System programs, visit firstnations.org or nativefoodsystems.org. on Indigenous Peoples Day weekend. Welcome and thank you for tuning in tonight for our chef's demo with Ben Jacobs and Matt Chandra of Takabi, which is part of our Reclaiming Native American Food Traditions fundraiser in partnership with First Nations Development Institute, the CU Boulder College of Media Communications and Information and Slow Food Boulder County. And thank you to the city of Boulder for including us in their Indigenous Peoples Day celebration. Later tonight, after this chef's demo at 7 p.m., we'll be presenting a film program with Gather, a documentary about Native Americans reclaiming their food traditions to heal themselves and their people, and a panel discussion and Q&A with Native American cast members, the Gather director, and the vice president of programs and administration at First Nations. The live stream will be recorded, and you can watch the entire program until midnight on October 11th. Speaking of future programs, please join us for a virtual health and nutrition program on Sunday, November 15th, and our eight day virtual festival from January 28th to February 5th, with 10 feature films and three short film programs, esteemed speakers for every feature film, local art, lectures, and food and film related events. More details about our festival will be on our website and other channels. Here's a tip. Facebook generally has the most recent information first. We appreciate the generosity of Takabi for making Native American dinners available for this event. Also, a very special thank you to Ben and Matthew for their demo today. And now we'd like to give a shout out to our Silver Spoon sponsors. Best Served, Big Red F Group, Black Cat Bistro, Bramble and Hair, Bucha Products, Colorado Office of Film, Television, and Media, Caliper, Cured, Feed Your Vibe, Highland Honey, Local Table Tours, Pack a Fork, Root Marketing and PR, Savory Spice Shop, Boulder, Spees Digital, Taste made. We are using a system called Eventive that automatically shows both the movie and the discussion afterwards in this window. It's new to us. Please bear with us through any glitches. If you have questions about how to use Eventive, you can access an FAQ and pose questions to Eventive support by clicking need help in this window or typing help in the chat window and we'll get you help. You can also submit questions for the speakers through the chat function of this viewing window. Click the chat button, open the chat window, type your questions, and we'll respond promptly. 
Hi, my name is Leilani Osmondson. I was one of the student winners for the Flatirons Food Film Festival last year with my film called Cake Mix. And because of that, I ended up going to the festival. I watched a ton of amazing, amazing short films about food, about farming, about sustainability. Um, and all of those films really inspired me to make my new film this year called The Farm. Um, and The Farm is actually the grand winner of the student category in the uh, Flatirons uh, Food Film Festival, which is just super, super exciting. Um, the Farm is a poetic documentary about the cyclical nature of life and death uh, because there's no better way to show that than at a farm um, and I'm just so happy that it was chosen um, and I really really hope you enjoy the film. You can watch it at the Flatirons Food Film Festival which is now moved to the end of January beginning of February um, so please please go uh, please watch all the short films please um, you know support all of the the local filmmakers um, and please donate there's website and donation info in the chat that you can look at um, and I would just really encourage you to take advantage of this amazing festival uh, which I am just so happy and thrilled to be a part of. Ben and Matt are here to teach us about Native American food. Ben Jacobs and Matt Chandra are co-owners of Takabi, an American Indian eatery which opened in December 2008. Ben and Matt added a second location in 2015 and a food truck in 2016. Takabi is the only American Indian owned and operated restaurant in Metro Denver. Takabi originated from Grey Horse, an American Indian eatery established in downtown Denver in 1989 by the Jacobs family. The Jacobs are tribal members of the Osage Nation. Takabi uses some of the same recipes from Grey Horse and has expanded on Osage family recipes to create a new and unique take on American Indian cuisine. Ben and Matt also work with the USDA and the food distribution programs on Indian reservations and use tribal-owned supplies whenever possible. Welcome, Ben and Matt. 